Bom, galera, beleza? A gente está aqui na Feira do Livro, no Centro Cultural Érico Veríssimo, com Kim Anderson, autor de Helena, e eu vou trocar uma ideia com ele. Ele recém teve uma palestra muito legal, ambiente super engraçado ali. A gente vai falar um pouco sobre essa obra. First of all, excuse me for a bad English, and congratulations, man. I enjoyed the book. I like Helena a lot. First of all, I've heard worse English, and thank you. Então, vocês já podem ver que ele é um cara muito legal. You, you are a really nice guy. <laughs> so far. Uh, your first work was Blood Hurts, a series of short stories. I, I was able to read some articles about, and uh, yes, he has had arrived in Brazil, hopefully with the vet, Arthur, yes. our friend, is a nice, nice guy. Yeah. Uh, talk about, talk about Blood Hurts. Sure. And then. Um, When I started out making comics, uh, as a lot of new uh, aspiring comic book artists, they want to create their, their big epic project, hundreds and hundreds of pages long. And I was the same. I had one of those projects. But my mentor, uh, Peter Sneidia, a Danish comic book artist, he, uh, he has drawn Batman and BPRD and the Preacher, he's like a real comic book artist. Yeah, right? <laughs> he told me, make short comics, make short comics. That's the only way you learn how to make comics. You have to finish a comic to learn from it. And it's a lot easier to finish a short comic than to finish a long comic. So finally I listened to him and I created this uh, short comic called Love Hurts. And I created some limitations. They're all romance, they're all horrible <laughs> horror stories, and uh, they always have a twist. And uh, usually I play with different um, um, IDs of, uh, of men and women and the gender uh, equalities and things like that, which I find is very interesting. And, uh, but of course, since it's a, such a short story, you can't go very deep into the character. You have to uh, use archetype characters, characters that we already kind of know. I yeah. can imagine whatever I want about that mm. story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recently I read The Secret Life of London. Like a punch yeah. in this comic. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's the difference, the main difference mm. uh, uh, between Wright, uh, Elena mm. and these short stories? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I, I did a, a bunch of short stories before I started to, to make Elena, because I wanted to feel that I was ready to do it. Because it's a, it's a huge endeavor to make a long, a graphic novel. It takes years to make such a book. You said one and a half year to, just to draw it. Yeah, yeah, just to draw it. <laughs> oh. uh, that's, that's drawing and inking and coloring. Uh, it's everything after writing the script. It takes about a year to one and a half years. It's, yeah, it's crazy, right? But, so what I can do in a long story that I can't do in short stories is to tell more serious subjects. Because more serious subjects you have to be more careful with and you have to respect those subjects more and you have to give them time. And they're, they're harder to tell so you have and to... And have the need to make them uh, more believable also. Yeah, yeah. and the, so I can make the characters not that typical characters. I can actually give them um, some personality and some, uh, uh, they feel more human. Escape from the stereotypes. Yeah, escape from the stereotypes. Which I also did in my short stories, but in a much more uh, brutal way. I just twisted them around, but this time I can, I can get to know my characters in a, in a different way. But it's, It's, it's a lot more work, of course, it's so much longer, but you also end up uh, working from a deeper part of yourself. So it's, 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 uh, it's more sensitive subjects, I feel, when I, when I make a long story. 
when I make a short story, it's more just having fun. <laughs> and I love making those short stories. They're super ins inspirational. I, I did them for years. I did one every month for years. They were published in a magazine monthly. So that month, I, I, like one month, I had seen a lot of uh, Chinese wuxia movies, like kung fu movies. And I was so into that. So I did a, I did a comic, a kung fu comic, a romantic horror kung fu comic. Next month, I was so into mermaids. So I did a horror comic, a romantic horror comic with mermaids. I just did whatever I was into at the moment. And that was so inspirational. And it was the best way for me to, to learn how to become good at making comics. All that uh, uh, bring to you a major fan base of teenage girls. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alena. Uh, was a comic book made thinking about these teenage girls that mm -hmm. are your fans? I think the story of Alena had been growing inside me for a lot of years. I had been writing on it, kind of uh, with my left hand, you know, while doing other projects for, for several years before I decided this is what I'm gonna do. And, um, and also, as you, as you mentioned, my, com my uh, romantic horror comics, Love Hurts, uh, turned out to be popular with the teenage girls and I took that to heart. I was very happy about that and I and I met them at signings and everything and they were so nice and they were so cute and I and I really felt a connection to them so I was like I I'm gonna give you guys a story I'm gonna give you a story but of course it's it's just gender you know you'll appreciate it just as much as they do the story is about the the the, uh, the story comes from me. I'm a man. Uh, I just dressed the characters uh, in, in in girls' uh, uh, bodies. I think these these uh, experiences of bullying and uh, and uh, sexual equality or sexual uh, um, preference and, and whatever um, it's so universal. It applies both to girls and boys. It just, uh, I like to draw girls. So. And focusing on, on the plot, uh, Alena starts like it, the regular teenage movie. Mm -hmm. We have the girl, we have the trauma, yeah. uh, we have the bullies, and I was telling you before, and suddenly it all goes insane. <laughs> How was the process? Yeah, I think the, one of the reasons uh, for that happening is that I'm very, I was very influenced by horror movies, by a lot of American horror movies, and I felt like, subconsciously, I was trying to put all a lot of different horror genres, there are, there are horror sub-genres, and I tried to use a lot of them, so I think Alena kind of starts out as one sub-genre, um, uh, it, it starts out like a ghost story and then it evolves into another uh, more uh, of a um, more of a haunting scary Actually, story. Actually there was a moment when I thought the girl was alive. Oh yeah. shit. That girl is alive. Yeah right? <laughs> and then it kind of ends up it kind of ends up like a real splatter movie like a classic 80s splatter movie you know like uh, yeah, you remember those movies. <laughs> well, uh, I read in an interview that you said uh, Alena was like a therapy. Oh, there's a lot of me in the book, definitely. I think I am in all of the different characters. And, uh, and uh, of course, I haven't killed anyone. I hope you realize that. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yet? No. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but it, 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 it's about issues that I was thinking about growing up. And um, yeah, as I mentioned, I, it's, a, it's a story that I have been thinking about and, and, and in, a, in a way writing since I was very young. And um, yeah, it, it's very intimate and, and, it, and it was very therapeutic to write. When we, when we made the movie out of it, they made a movie out of the book, uh, I was asked to go back and uh, look at the script and all my and all my um, work around the book, and I reread everything, and I noticed that this is uh, 
this is another person than, that, than I am now who wrote this book. I couldn't have written this book today. And I'm very happy about that because I think I'm a, I'm a happier person now when I've got the book out of me. It, it was very therapeutic, yeah. And, and uh, how was this experience with the movie? Oh, that was fantastic, of course. Um, uh, that was, uh, yeah, of course a dream come true. I, no, not a dream come true because I never dared to dream about it. It was just crazy. It, it, it happened and, and the movie turned out really, really well. Um, um, and I got to be a part of it. I got to work on the script. I got to be a part of the casting and the, and the design of the, uh, uh, the clothes and the, and the locations. And I, I got to be a part of the whole pre-production. When they started to shoot, I, I stepped out of the room and I was like, this is the director's uh, baby now. It's up to him to, to, to make it a, a beautiful thing. And he really did. Daniel Di Grado is his name. And he, he made a beautiful movie. And I'm really proud of it. And I got to be in the movie. I have a, a small cameo in the movie. That's really cool. <laughs> we also love Alan Moore. Sure, definitely. I was very happy when you said that before. Yeah, on the action. panel, yeah. Man <laughs> is the god of the comic books. Yeah, yeah. What's your biggest influence? I don't know, Stephen King, Alan Moore, Sam mm -hmm. Kiefer, mm -hmm. what's your favorite writers? I don't know if I have uh, one favorite in that way, but I do love Alan Moore. And, uh, and what, I, what I like about Alan Moore is that I love how he has such a huge respect for the medium of comics. He, he really... He understands, and I think he has taught me through his comics the the possibility of of the medium, the 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 stories you can tell with comics, the way you can tell them, the the strengths that comics have that makes it even cooler or more magic or more exciting the movies and literature and everything and every other medium. Comics has its own strengths and I think uh, Alan Moore is very good at uh, using those strengths and uh, I think comic book creators should do that. Uh, some, some comic books I feel like when I read it I, I feel like this, this should have been a movie. This should have been a a uh, novel, literature. Why did he make a comic out of it? It takes so much time to make a comic book. Make a regular book, you know. S comics have uh, some books of him is just impossible mm. to make a movie. Yeah, yeah, they've tried, and uh, and they failed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think so. I I don't know. I liked Watchmen. I think Watchmen I like was okay, but uh, I think that's about it. Um, uh, and he hates he hates the movies. We all hate. <laughs> yeah, right. Finishing. Let's yeah. talk about Astrid. Sure. It's a, a bizarre space saga. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I hope to, I hope I can read. Oh yeah, it's yeah. it's gonna. I think yeah. we're gonna publish it in Brazil, definitely. And uh, talk a little about the plot. I kind of. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a mix between Love Hurts and Alena. I wanted to take the, the excitement and the inspirational uh, feelings that I had when I created Love Hurts. Um, uh, and I want to have the opportunity to go deeper into characters that I had with Alena. And <laughs> on top of that, I wanted to create a main character, Astrid that you really, really like. That you really root for. She doesn't have it very easy, but you really want her to. She's a good, good person. <laughs> That's not very easy to, to, to write, a good person. But she can't be all the way good, of course. That would make her unbelievable and, and make her obnoxious. Of course she has faults, but she, she works hard, you know, and I, I really 
I think I really managed to pull that off. I really love Astrid. She became the character that I really, really liked. And that gave us a little hope? Yeah, right? right? I think so. It's the character that you aspire to be. We have a bunch of anti-heroes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sick of anti-heroes. <laughs> that was such a 90s thing. It's a moment for heroes too. I think so, yeah. And, and there's of course the point of her being a, a woman. And uh, I think a good female hero is, is something that we need. And I, I've created for her and for her adventures a fantastic galaxy full of uh, amazing monsters and creatures and and also like politics and uh, yeah it's it's a really really exciting uh, sci-fi galaxy i pretty much created my own star wars you know <laughs> man thank you so much thank you i hope you enjoy Fair of the of course it's an event that makes us proud yeah i guess yeah definitely galera Ken Anderson, in breve here in the Blockbuster. Beijo, tchau, tchau. <laughs> oh.